All right, in this video, we are going to extend our discussion of decision analysis using decision trees, and we're going to introduce the concept of value of information. Now, I don't usually say this, but if you haven't watched our previous video on decision analysis, introducing the concept of decision analysis, you're really going to have to do that now, because in this video, we're going to extend a problem that we worked on in the past video. So if you haven't watched it, you'll be pretty lost. Okay, so, so if you haven't watched the previous video, do that now. Great. And since you're back, I'll assume you've watched it. And we're going to continue working off this mining question. And so, you know, quick recap, you know, we've got this mining company. They can make one of uh, three bids or not bid at all on this contract to, to mine a land. And there's various uh, probabilities associated with winning the bid and with the money that they can earn from the land itself. And we worked out this incredibly complicated decision tree, but it actually wasn't as complicated as it could have been, as you'll see now. Because part C for that question asks, the company has the opportunity to hire a surveying firm. This partnership will cost the mining company $1 million, but the surveying firm will be able to tell the mining company what type of yield the land will have before the start of bidding. What should the mining company do? All right. So again, we're going to have to use a decision tree to find the answer to this. In the last video, we determined that the correct course of action for the mining company was going to be to throw out a low bid of uh, $1 million, and they would have uh, an expected outcome based on the whole bidding process of $320,000. But now this adds a wrinkle. Now there's this possibility that they're going to be able to, uh, to know whether the, the land is going to have good yield, poor yield, or no yield at all before they even start bidding. So let's figure out what they, what they want to do here. Go with a small thickness for this line. Well, the first thing that's going to happen, right, I'm going to build my decision tree from left to right. The first thing that's going to happen is no longer whether they're going to bid, it's whether they're going to buy this information or whether they're going to work with the surveying firm, right? So they can either buy or they can pass. And if they buy, if they pass, you know, whatever, it's a zero. No, no money at all. Oh, wait, no, that's not exactly true. If they pass, they're still going to, to want to bid, right? There's still a $320,000 uh, expected value associated with bidding, so they're probably still going to want to bid. That makes sense. So we're going to call this 0.32 million. That's what the decision to pass is worth. But let's figure out what the decision to buy might be. Okay, well, we know they're going to have to spend a million dollars, but we're not going to get to that yet. Remember, we're going to work at values from right to left. So if they buy, then we actually have a chance node. We have three possible outcomes. Ooh, those are bad lines. Not my best work. It can be a good plot of land. It can be poor. Or it can have no yield at all. And that's, we're going to find that out if we buy the information. But there's still a probability associated with each one, right? And then we're going to face a decision. Once we find that out, those are only nominally squares uh, for the decision. Well, once we find that out, then we have to make a decision about what to bid. Right? Oh, well, actually, I didn't exactly do this right, did I? It's not just whether they're going to submit a high, medium, or low bid. They can submit no bid at all. All right, so I'm going to say this is a high bid, medium bid, low bid. I can already see how terrible my space issues are going to be here. But I can't do anything about that now. High bid, medium bid, low bid, no bid. Thanks for bearing with me, folks. All right, and then we're not even done yet. After they submit their bid, there's a couple of possibilities. They're either going to win that bid or they're going to lose it. But not if they submit no bid. If they submit no bid, actually, you know what? Let me clean this up. Oops, I don't want that. That's what I want. All 
I'm going to... Oh, God, it's even worse. Okay. We're just going with that. You know, in the interest of space, um, I'm just going to write this up here. Once, win, lose. Winning is always going to be on top. Losing is always going to be on the bottom. Just remember, you can do it. All right. Now where do we stand? Well, now we're going to... We've got all our decisions, and I, I didn't exactly uh, draw everything out, but uh, I'm going to... We have to put values in. We're going to put in values and probabilities going from right to left. So let's start with that. Well... What's the value associated with this whole track? We buy, there's, it, the, the surveying firm says it's a good, good piece of land. We submit our high bid because we really want it, and then we win the bid. What's the value associated with that? Well, okay, we know the value of a good piece of land is $10 million, right? And we know that a high bid is going to cost us $3 million to make. And we also know that Hiring the surveying firm is going to cost a million dollars also. So this is equal to six. Let's keep working with this. If we lose the bid, you know, in this case, actually, if we lose the bid, it's not a zero outcome, right? Because we had to, we still pay the surveying firm, so that's that's going to be negative one. Bummer. Still lose. Still out a million dollars. A medium bid is going to be ten minus two million for the medium bid minus one is equal to seven. This is still negative one. A low bid is going to be 10 minus 1 minus 1 is going to be equal to 8. And if we lose, still negative 1. All right. Continuing to work through, hey, this is going to be the, the, um, the same here, right? A high bid, I, sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I, I apologize. This is no longer a good piece of land. Now we're at the what, what happens if we have a poor piece of land. Well, a poor piece of land is worth two. Ooh, a high bid is going to be three. That's that's no good. This is we're getting into the negatives here. This is this is negative two, and uh, negative one. If we lose the bid, that's that's an unappealing prospect. A poor piece of land with a medium bid is going to be two minus two minus one. Again, we're still negative. This is negative, uh, and a low bid gives us two minus one minus one. On that poor piece of land. So that's zero. It's slightly better. And of course, losing the bid still gives us negative one. All right. Now, when we get down to here, uh, if, if the surveying firm tells us uh, there's, you can't mine this land. It's it's no good. Uh, are we ever gonna? You know, that's just a negative. Everything is going to be negative. Uh, the best thing that we can hope for is to lose our bid, right? I mean, just think about this. We're going to have a, a zero minus whatever bid minus the cost of paying the surveying firm. Uh, all of these, you know, no matter what, even if it's a low bid, we're still going to pay money for that bid. So if we win, that's lousy. What we really want is to just pay the surveying firm and, and be done with it. So I can tell you right now, I mean, hopefully this makes sense to everybody. The, the, the price of winning, uh, if, if we know the land has no yield, is bad. We don't ever want to bid. So we are always going to choose a no bid if the surveying firm tells us there's, no mo there's, there's nothing to be had from this land. So we know that. Fair enough. Um, so I'm going to actually cross off these decision nodes. I don't even need to figure out probabilities and all that junk. It's just, it's done with. But let's go ahead and, and, and I, I'm getting a little bit of ahead of myself over there, but uh, let, let's, let's work this thing through um, using, using our steps. So now we're moving from right to left. We have all our values and we're taking those values, multiplying them. We have to add in the probabilities and then multiply them by the probabilities. If I submit a high bid, probability of winning that bid is 0.95. Probability of losing is 0.05. This is 50-50. This is 20-80. That is a 0 0.2, I swear. That looks better. All right. Uh, this is just going to repeat itself, of course. Doesn't matter what the firm told us. We're still bidding against people who don't know. That's a 0 0.8. All right. So multiplying these together, we have points, we have 6 times 0 0.95, which is going to be equal to supposedly 5.7. At least that's what my calculator told me when I did it earlier. This is going to be negative 0.05. 
Add these two together and we get 5.65. Here, 7 times 0.5 is 3.5. 0 0.5 times negative 1 is negative 0.5. This is 3. And down at the low bid, we say 0.2 times 8 is 1.6. Is that right? No. Yes, it is right. <laughs> and point and then negative one times point eight is negative point eight. So I, I wrote that in the wrong place. Oh god, it's getting ugly. <laughs> one point six times uh plus negative point eight is gonna be equal to point eight. And I don't really need to write this so so it's legible because it's getting pretty clear. What am I going to do when I get to this decision node? This is clearly the optimal, right? Right up here, 5.65. That's our best outcome if we get to it. So we're going to choose the path that leads us to it. This is how we do it. Um, rhyme unintentional. Sorry about that. <laughs> we don't. Now we've already worked out the, the, what, we, what we would do if there was a if there's no yield on the land. So we can kind of get down here and, and try to wedge some answers in. Um, except. This is sort of interesting. This is not looking good. Uh, I can already tell you that, that the, um, the probabilities associated with these are, are lousy. Uh, in fact, they're going to be worse than choosing no bid, right? But maybe, I mean, because here if we win, it's going to be worse than if we lose the bid. Um, here we're indifferent to winning or losing, so whatever. Um, but what about down here? What if we submit a low bid? Does that, is that good? Well, okay, 0.2 times 0 is going to be equal to 0, and 0.8 times negative 1 is going to be equal to negative 0.8. And that is actually, so we add those two together, and we get negative 0.8 over that node. And that is actually slightly better than negative 1 here, and this one is also going to be negative 1, and this is going to be negative more than, or less than negative 1, so even worse. So, this is our optimal node. It's not a great outcome, but it's better than the others, right? So that node, oh, by the way, I forgot to write these, the optimal decision above my node up here. The optimal decision over here, if, they, if the surveying firm has told us this is a poor plot of land, it's going to be negative 0.8. And down here, we've already chosen our nodes. So I'm, by the way, I forgot to cross off my, the nodes I don't want. This one is negative 1. Hey, we're getting there. We're almost done with this thing. Thank you for staying, uh, still watching, because I know it hasn't been fun watching me draw all, all over this page. But you see where we're going with this. Now, okay, you know, we know the probabilities associated with a good piece of land, a poor piece of land, or no. No, apparently I don't know the probabilities. This should be 0.3. Hey, I converted that 5 into a 3 pretty well. All right, and that's just given to us. I mean, the fact that the, the firm is going to survey and tell us doesn't actually influence whether the, the, how good the land is going to be. That's just, that's, you know, nature, I guess. So now we're going to keep following our process. We're going to multiply the probability times the value. So 0 0.2 times 5.65 is 1.13. I just did that in my head. No, I didn't. All right, uh, 0.3 times negative 0.8 is going to be negative 0.24 and 0.5 times negative 1 is negative 0.5. I actually did do that one in my head. All right, so I add those up and I get something. I get 0.39. Also known as 0.39 million. So down here, now we're at our final decision node. We can either buy and the expected value is going to be 0.39 million, or we can pass on the surveying firm, and the expected value is going to be 0.32 million. So it's pretty obvious that we want this. So I'm going to cross this out. And therefore, the value associated with this set of circumstances, where the surveying firm comes to us and says, we can tell you how much that land is worth, uh, and then we actually go through the whole bidding process, is 0.39 million. And furthermore, we actually know what will happen. We've, we've figured it all out. We know 
that what's going to happen if the surveying firm tells us various things? If they say, oh, that's a good piece of land, we just say, okay, we're going to submit a high bid. If they say, eh, it's a poor piece of land, then we know we've already paid the surveying firm. We're going to submit a low bid. If they tell us there's nothing on it, then we're going to submit no bid at all. So we have sort of our whole plan of action worked out. Let's go back to the questions because I know there's one more that we haven't answered yet. So what should the mining company do? They should buy that surveying information. They should do it. How much is the surveying company's information worth to the mining company? Think about that one for a second. How much is the surveying company's information worth to, mine, to the mining company? Well, the value of information, information is worth however much it is going to increase your expected outcome plus the cost of that information itself. So here we have an outcome that is it's going to be $70,000. I don't know why I'm still operating in millions, but whatever is also known as 70K. That's $70,000 more, except we already paid in this calculation here, we already paid the surveying company a million dollars. So actually, the value of the information they're supplying to us is worth what we just paid them, and the additional value it brings to our, well, our the additional expected value it gives to us, if we were to, as opposed to if we were just flying blind. So the total value is going to be equal to 1.07 million. Hopefully, that makes sense to everybody. As I said, these decision analysis problems can get truly complicated and ugly, but if you follow these steps, the whole thing can get a lot easier. You really just have to go, you build from left to right, then you start adding values and probabilities, and take those all the way back from right to left until you're en you end up with a final expected value.